Healthy Lifestyle Design is a part of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. Hello everyone, and welcome to Healthy Lifestyle Design, a mom and daughter podcast. I'm Pamela Heichel, and I will be joined soon by my mother and co-host, Janet Heichel. On the show, we share our passion for a healthy lifestyle and what has worked best for us and what we are still exploring. We are constantly educating ourselves and talking to each other about the body, mind, and soul, and how they're all interconnected. So we thought, why not share our journey with you? Today's episode was, is inspired by one of my Mbiolic's episodes on her podcast. It's all about fiber and our gut health and that connection between gut and brain, that axis. And so Janet and I just talk about our thoughts and ideas and our experiences with our diet, our body, and bringing fiber into our everyday meal plan. And for someone like me who's been a vegetarian, pescatarian, a vegan for most, if not all, my adult life, when I take a look at what I eat, I find it quite shocking the little amount of the fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains and nuts and beans that make up this beautiful thing called fiber that I actually have in my diet. And I'm the first to admit it, especially on this podcast, that when my life gets busy and I don't prioritize properly or give my time myself the time and space that I need, that I do revert to... Um, Uh, ordering in food and getting prepared food and we don't get fiber from there and fiber is fantastic it makes us feel full it pushes waste through our intestines it can help um, correct and relieve constipation and diarrhea it is absolutely vital to a healthy working body so listen along with us please Now, before we begin, let's listen to our sponsors. This episode of Healthy Lifestyle Design is brought to you by the Edmonton Community Foundation. The foundation acts as a bridge between donors and charities to create a strong, vibrant community for generations to come. You can start an endowment fund yourself or with a group, and once it reaches $10,000, it can start distributing funds. Vital Signs is an annual checkup conducted by Edmonton Community Foundation in partnership with Edmonton Social Planning Council to measure how the community is doing. This year's focus is on making ends meet in Edmonton. Learn more at ecfoundation.org. This episode of Healthy Lifestyle Design is brought to you by Tap Root Spotlight a service that helps businesses and organizations pay attention to the people they serve. Taproot tells you the news about the people and companies that are important to you. Use that information internally to keep everyone on the same page or share it with the world in your newsletter, on your website, and on your social media channels. Paying attention pays dividends. Find out more at taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. That's taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. And finally, check out more podcasts in the Alberta Podcast Network. I love this. You should too. It's a podcast about sharing the things you like with the people you love, regardless of how terrible you think their taste may be. Hosts Indy and Samantha take turns introducing the others to beloved movies and other pieces of pop culture and try to convince them that they should love it too. Sometimes they agree, sometimes they argue, but either way, they still have to live together. Find them where you listen to podcasts. All right, folks, that's all I got. Let's get to it. Well, hello there, JP. Hi, Pamela. How are you today? Very good. We just came back from seeing a musical. Oh, I loved it. I know it's been in my... uh, uh, 
calendar, agenda, agenda, bucket list. whatever bucket list to see that. And I thought, Jesus, I oh Jesus, I thought I better go, uh, you know, because this is the last time. Yeah, this was it for it. Today was the last day. So we're talking about Hot Boy Summer that is presented by um, Grindstone Theater, and it was amazing. It was amazing. I loved yeah. it. It was on the news. It's been. Um, in circulation for what almost a year now yes and a lot of people have said oh my god you know how great it is to see yeah. it and I decided well we decide actually we should go see it and, yeah. I, and I was pleased very very yeah. pleased I loved it it was a packed house believe it or not and um, I like that politically it was balanced but we all kind of know yes. what the, the slant or angle or the focus was and the audience was um, really welcoming of it and I don't know if it's like this at every performance that they do or if it's the last one, but there were certainly moments of the the actors kind of laughing and getting caught off guard and engaging with the audience a little bit and improv -ing. Yes, I, I, really I really enjoyed that. that. I really enjoyed that because it was, and I was thinking, gee, after uh, what they traveled to Calgary, they, Fort McMurray, Grand Prairie, and the Red Deer, Red Deer, and, do, and then they did us, and I'm going like, do they still break down and they laugh among Probably. themselves because it's so comical? It's so ridiculously it, it, good, it, you know. And you could see them on their faces; they're trying to hold back the laughter, and you can even catch the laughter in there a little bit. And they just continue. I, I, it, it's great. It was done. It was really done well. Yeah, and we we left it to the last minute, which I'm kind of glad. You yes, know, you know, usually see the it. last minutes are the better ones. Yeah, yeah it was good. Um, and then I also, a little birdie told me on the news that we in Edmonton, Alberta here might have to wait until June for good weather. <laughs> yeah, that's something else. I just looking outside, Pamela, it's like oh, yeah. snow uh, sky. Yeah. It's, it's this white sky with big clouds. There's not a blue sky in sight. It's like snow. And they did call for afternoon rain. No. Or showers or mixture of something. I'm going to look and, that up. And uh, I did see, uh, read the article you did oh, as yes. well. Oh, yes. In about, in about an hour, we are at 80% rain from about 7 p.m. till... And you know what? Rain is good because yeah. it cleans up things. This and is it, true. And it, and it makes green greenery because we are starting to get <gasps> green. JP, on Thursday, it's going to be 22 degrees, but 80% rain. See, uh, I mean, there's just no winning in this You know, city, uh, I mean, that's on that. But when the news I looked, there was no rain for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Oh, so are you so, saying that your news, your weather app is more informed than mine? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm just I saying just, she is. I'm crossing my fingers because I do, sometimes it, the I weather know. is unpredictable. I know. I know. So that's all I'm saying. But yes, I did read the article. It said Canadians... You know, uh, brace yourself and be calm. We might have a terrible May. Uh, we might not see the sunshine, beautiful weather till June. And that's all right. I mean, say la vie. We, we, May we, was always, because that's when your birthday, always. birthday comes. And I remember when you were small, I tried to have birthdays at the park and it was always <laughs> raining. So I, I, you never could have your birthday on your day. That's probably why I was miserable all the time. So we had to wait till it was nicer to have the birthdays. May, May 9th is my birthday, FY, FYI. And Mother's Day is May 8th. Mm -hmm. And this year we're going away to Canada, which is beautiful. <gasps> I wasn't supposed to tell you. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Why weren't you supposed to? I'm kidding. To I just want to catch you off guard. So it's fun to see your Okay, reaction. anyway, the, uh, uh, hopefully if you listen to this podcast... Uh, it doesn't matter. No, but we're excited. We'll be gone. Because what were we? We were listening to something. We were watching or listening to something. And at the... No, ac actually... Oh, it might even be in our last episode. I can't even remember now. All over the place. Once we finished recording our last episode, I said, that's it, Mom. Um, we can be mindful of the current state of affairs, but we have to live. Right? And we can do it in a safe way. You're, you're absolutely right. And a responsible I, I think that's way. Right, because how long we plan, we were telling each other, how long do you stay home to be safe? Right. How, how, when do we continue our lives? Right. We're vaccinated. I got COVID. You got COVID. Yes. I mean. So uh, we're just going to um, enjoy our life like we were planning to. Because right. uh, who knows what tomorrow's like. That's right. So right. we're on our way. So right. Canmore is our first trip, and from there, we, who knows where we'll go. Well, we'll I got some that. relatives in New York that yes. are like, when are you coming? We're going to the States probably in the fall. In the fall, yes. I have to look to see if I need a booster. 
because I'm a, a mixed cocktail with yeah. the AstraZeneca slash Pfizer. No big deal. Easy to work that out. Easy okay. work. I'm all three backstage. Pfizer, the same thing. Excellent. So anyway, the, today the, we yeah. are going to talk about Pam. Well, I, I showed you, I shared with you one of my Bialik's episode, Love Her. And she did an episode with Dr. Will. Bel Dr. B, she calls Dr. Him. B. Belushevich <laughs> on help and heal your gut. And it was a really, really, really interesting um episode lots of great information i listened to that as well and i was really um oh i it was an eye-opener for me right as I, I i i think we did an episode on fiber at one time i'm sure we did but how important fiber is in our diet i know well let me back up a little bit and this dr b mind Bialix breakdown podcast he is a gastro Enternologist, a nutritionist, a New York Times bestselling author of Fiber Fueled and the Fiber Fueled Cookbook. Yes. And he stopped by to break down gut health and practical steps we can take to heal our guts. And he unpacks gluten, food sensitivities, and fiber's role in gut health. He explains the significance of microbiomes, challenges highly restrictive diets. And discusses why bowel movements directly inform gut health. And Mayim and him consider the gut's effect on mood, why digestive issues can still manifest even with proper nutrition, and the evidence-based benefits of a plant-based diet. They discuss the ways of food intolerances can lead to disordered eating and how to fix those intolerances the mental health impact of dietary challenges, and empowering oneself with information about one's specific dietary needs. I read that all out because if people want more informed, specific information, yeah. you should really listen to this episode or his books or have conversations with medical experts. I might even get his book, not his cookbook, but his book on it. I would be interested uh, in the cookbook. And the cookbook, well, yeah. I, I think we all are knowledgeable or aware how to that we need more fiber, how to cook with fiber. I don't think so, because then it wouldn't be an issue if we did. Uh, Pam, first of all, we're plant-based. Yes. We probably eat much more fiber than most people do. Well, no, I will be the first one on this um, podcast, on this episode, to say that um, it's very easy for me to get into really bad habits with my eating and my food. And it's probably the number one place where I spend the majority of my money and I will buy um, either prepared healthy food, quote unquote, or order healthy food, quote okay, unquote. Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, but there's no healthy ordered food. No, I know, but I, I'm just, I'm being completely okay. honest. And I will tell you that um, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to have or to keep a food diary, for example, to know that I'm feeling a certain way because I've been eating a certain way, right? Okay. That heaviness in your gut, the bloating, when it feels hard, when you go to the bathroom and it feels strained, when you don't feel like you completely emptied your bowel, that's yes. a terrible feeling. Um, hemorrhoids, um, gas, irritability, uh, problems sleeping. Those are all related, JP. They are, you know, and um, I, I should say, too, that I do uh, practice eating healthy. Um, and I, I could use more fiber in my diet as well, too. I don't think I have enough fiber, but I have no problem going to the bathroom. I was When I was listening to this podcast, yeah. uh, one thing that really sprung to me, when you go to the bathroom and you walk out of the bathroom, feeling uh, euphoria <laughs> yes feeling like the lightness and like it he was talking about how that's that should be your feeling like having a bowel movement is an incredible um sensory celebratory feeling that we do as humans well as all animals when we defecate when we release properly Properly. properly. The key is properly and how many of us do that and I was trying to keep a note when I was after the um, listening to the podcast when I went to the washroom, and I do. I am regular every morning. Mm -hmm. I have my bowel movement. Mm -hmm. I walk out of there, and I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. I do not have the feeling that I haven't finished. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still more to come. It's, it's, it's done. It's, it's good. That's good. I could do better. 
Yes. I'm probably, I would say, 60%. I'm actually oh. quite regular. My bowel movements are strained. Um, yeah. I, I do have, and I know, like, it's also a mental thing, too. I don't like public washrooms. And I do have anxiety about um, how my gut and my bowels feel and eating and not being at home. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'll either hold or restrict what I'm eating because I just don't want to. Oh, and this is like, this is a lot of TMI. I don't even tell this to my, my closest friends and I'm, I'm airing my dirty laundry, literally, right? So yeah, that's something that um, I, could, I could work on and why not try to um, find some improvement through the way that you eat? Because if you can clear up the situation through how you eat, it's it's no risk, right? It's a win-win. True. Yes. Right? Uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm sorry, Pam, but I don't live with you. I have no clue what your diet is like. Right. I know that there's a lot of ordering out. Oh, yes. Skip. You should see her face when she says that. <laughs> Skip oh, the dishes or whoever's bringing it. So right. I know... Um, I know for one thing that uh, depends what you order out. I don't know what that is, right. but uh, it's not. It's still plant based. It's not terrible. But is that is that gluten from the vegetarian uh, right. restaurant? Is right. that good for you? Well, I mean, it's not something that I think our diet should be comprised of like a hundred percent. It is vital wheat gluten, so it it is health. Like it does oh, it, pack nutrients, oh, B twelve okay. and protein. It's not like it's just gum or glue or whatever. Well, that's what I was thinking. That's no. what I was really worried about. It, it's predominantly like yeast, really. Okay. Vital gluten. Is it like a... No, no, but vital... Wait, I'm. this is real time here. Is is it like fiber pack? Well, Does gonna... it have fiber? Well, I, I, I... Wait. See, that's what I'm thinking about. Vital gluten. That, that, that's what really the problem is for me when you... When you if it's healthy, if it's good for your uh, gut, mm. fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But is it that I do not know that? That's why I'm asking you because I know that's your go-to place. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> oh no, I'm trying no, to not find. That. I'm, no, I'm trying to find. Oh, oh no, no, not there. I'm trying to find like because when okay. I okay, okay. Although it's not technically a flour, vital wheat gluten is a flour-like powder that contains nearly all gluten and minimal starch. It's made by hydrating wheat flour, which activates the gluten protein, and it's then processed to remove everything but the gluten. Well, that doesn't sound very good, no, does it? No, that's what I'm saying, because uh, aren't some people gluten tolerant? Yes, correct. Yes. So they wouldn't be eating, eating it. That. So foam meat. The other main use for vital wheat gluten is seton, also known as wheat meat, a vegan meat alternative. Seton is often made by mixing vital wheat gluten with spices and seasonings and adding a liquid. Once a stiff dough forms, it's either steamed, baked, or broiled, boiled to create a chewy and savory texture similar to meat. Seton can be used to emulate chicken, breakfast sausage, pepperoni, and more. The, this method of preparing gluten was first recorded in 6th century China, and it's still popular among the vegetarian Buddhist population in Asian countries to this day. So it's not that it's unhealthy, but I think the way in which we eat it, I can certainly bet that the, um, the Buddhists in 6th century China were not deep frying it. No, true. Right? It was probably steamed or boiled, Right? Probably, yeah. probably, yeah. yes. But it's not like it's made in a, a lab. It's not made in a science lab. It actually comes from gluten, forming gluten, right? So so the place where you uh, eat your yes. favorite restaurant, do they make their own? Um, I don't think so. I think they buy it because okay. you can. Um, even places like um, Not Blush Lane, for example, they'll... They'll sell products that are that are made with vital wheat gluten, but like Earth General Store will actually sell the vital wheat gluten that you can then use however you want to use it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there is nu nutrition. There is yeah. nutrients in it. I, I still don't know, you know, if that's good for your 
Gotcha. Well, I mean, well, right. I don't know. I think the, the jury is out um, on that. Is vital we we're kind of getting off topic here a little bit, but that's okay. Anyway, we were our topic is about fiber. Why most of us aren't eating enough fiber. The majority of population do not. We're all protein eaters. Right. Uh, population is basically eating protein. Most of us have very little, if any, fiber in our diet. Okay, wait. Yes, I do want to come back to okay. that, though. Vital wheat gluten contains a lot of nutritional value, which helps to keep you healthy and active throughout the day. It is processed food and considered safe and healthy to eat. But if you suffer from celiac disease okay. or have gluten allergies, then you must never think of consuming um, vital wheat gluten. Um, and it's not inflammatory unless someone actually has like the celiac disease or an allergy or a sensitivity. Okay. Okay. okay that's so good. there. So yes. So now fiber is um, a huge component of our diet that we should be. It should be um, that we have seen over the years, especially in the health and wellness and the diet industry that has been, you know, like given a bad name or almost completely eliminated from our yeah. repertoire, right? From our diet. And it's been replaced by a very heavily protein focused diet, which is predominantly meat based. Yes, a majority of the population, like I mentioned before, that's their main meal. We, we did say that uh, years ago, when before the women, the mm -hmm. ladies, yeah. uh, the wives, the mothers, in the population started to work, they right. were at home, so our diets were healthy diets because they had the protein, they had carbs, and they had the right. fiber in them. Right. As soon as we all went to work, of course, we're working more than mm -hmm. we're at home, not enough time to make the meal, so everything's processed, so yeah. we buy these fast foods. Right. So we're missing out on all the important nutrients that we need for our body. Yeah, you know, you bring up such a really interesting discussion and argument and by no means do I think you're being anti-feminist I, I think no I think companies and marketing companies found a really interesting opportunity when women began going to the uh, began to be part of the workforce like especially during the war right right and when the war was over and the men came home a lot of the women didn't want to leave the workforce and continue to work so rather than educating our population on a healthy proper diet and how to prepare at home and perhaps be you know involve the whole family in doing it i think companies because of the mighty dollar found a way to cure that need right to what how can we solve that pain point the woman is no longer in the household and is no longer there to greet the husband with a martini and to massage his feet and to have the dinner ready, ready, right? Yes. So, I mean, heaven forbid he be the first one home and has to pitch in, oh. right? And there was yet, we didn't have the crock pot just yet, we, yes, right? You're right. So that's like a really, really interesting discussion. So rather than um, find ways to involve other family members to maintain a healthy diet, we decided to Frankenstein yes. processed food, food to fill that gap. A pick up a, a pick up on your way home from work. Both of us probably, right. the husband and the wife, or yeah. the man or the whoever is in charge of the family came right. home at the same time. There's not enough time because the kids have to go to soccer or have to go to dance right. or wherever they go. You pick up these ready-made meals, yeah. these frozen meals that you throw in the microwave or throw in the oven half an hour. Or from ready. the restaurant. Or from the restaurant. Yes. Right. I mean now it's. Uh, um, back then, I'm not quite sure. I'm still back in the days. Sure, McDonald's, uh, you know, was you around. Up, yeah, McDonald's was around. You're right too. So you pick up all these foods, and that's what you yeah, eat. I know. And you, you know, what's interesting because we know, we know what's missing from the the family unit, whatever that family looks like for you, that home unit, and we know we're missing greatly from our diet because now we're still trying to provide a service to fill that void. But instead, you're getting shipped to you the fresh produce and protein with the recipe to make the damn food. 
at home freshly like I'm talking about what is what are door up oh, hello fresh hello and fresh and good food and good fresh I think it is right I don't know how many million others we have on on it now that make me this too but you, but you know what Pama here's the thing too mm. it's time mm -hmm. it's time consuming I mean fine if I my kids aren't old enough and my kids aren't doing any extracurricular acti curricular? curricular activities after school, fine. I can make these meals. We can all pitch in and help. Yeah, I know. But if we don't have the time, who has the time to? Um, do Mom, we it's it's a disease of our culture. And, you know, we, we talked about, well, I'm sure we, we did. We because talked we're about paste. I know. Population. No, no, but I'm saying we talked about Adam Grant before, uh, where they've coined the term recently because of the pandemic, the great um, resign or um, people are resigning, resign. right, from their jobs because there's no more satisfaction. There's no motivation to actually work to make money because we can't afford anything. True. So what's the point, right? And we have so far removed ourselves from what the family unit looked like before a lot of our ancestors came over, right? And we decided to completely ignore the peoples that that originally occupied this land on how they lived and organized themselves as a society, as a community, as a culture. And there's something to be said about, so in Italy, for example, you know, people go to work, Nona is probably at home, and then people break for lunch and they come home and maybe Nona is making dinner or depending on what your family looks like, you know, there's a lot of younger, the younger generation that aren't quite married yet. And I bet they all meet together and everyone chips in and you make your meal and you take your time and you make your meal and you eat it and then you freaking nap. Mm -hmm. Oh, for an God hour or two that we had right? this in North America. And then you go back to work. So you're well rested. You're socializing. You're around those that you love. You have variety. You take a time out. You have a wholesome, well-rounded meal. You have time to go to the bathroom. You, you're refreshed and you're motivated to go back to work because you know that when you're done work, you're all going to meet up again. You know, and, and it, what you describe, Pam, now think about in North America. Mm, we don't have that. We don't have that. So by the time uh, we go to work, we're rushed to begin with in the morning. Right, no so meal. what does your breakfast even look like, even if, if you, you have, have it? Yeah, I exactly. sure didn't. You see, and then so yeah, you're hungry by 10 o'clock, your coffee break, you run out if you if it's possible and you get a muffin. Something that's some kind of processed. sugary, frappy, exactly. latte. Everything that's processed, you go. And then your lunch is the same thing. Uh, and you're probably most likely eating your lunch in front of your computer alone. You, you know what? You have to I go sure to get lunch because how many people pack the lunch? This right? is the thing. You're still getting uh, fast foods. Yeah. And none of it's healthy to begin with. No. And then by the time you get home, you're back at fast food again. But, because, but you I, know, know I, know, I know we're talking about fiber, but even eating... There's, there's no fiber in your... I know, but there's no time to even relax and digest. That's what and I'm saying. And have a bowel movement. So, first of all, you're... By the time three o'clock rolls, rolls around in your work time, you're exhausted. You still have three hours to go if you're working till five or six. Right. So what kind of production is that? Some of them were so backwards here. You know, like if, if we started and, you know, my bosses back in the day would laugh at me, but I'm serious. Start me at 10 a.m. Because then I can get up. Depending on what your family unit looks like, you have animals, you have your grandparents older parents at home perhaps you have children you have enough time to wake up at a decent hour with the sun no that's, 5 a.m that's club. important because I even, if I, so even if i had to work when i work, used to get up at 4 30 because yes. i work six i needed that time to get up so i can relax and sit have my coffee yes. something to eat before i go to work i did not want to get up at quarter to six and roll Ugh. out of bed and straight to work I couldn't do that. No. You see, we need that in the morning. We yep. need to wake up and get our body in yep. a rhythm yep. and relax. It. Yeah. Come to work. You're at work with an empty bowel, so you're happy. You are. Because no one is happy when you're constipated. Oh. Forget it. And then you can do a solid two, two and a half to three hours of work, right? You're, you're fueled, you're revved, you're inspired, exactly. you're motivated, you're happy, you're healthy, you're nourished. And then you break for a lunch and you've got a certain amount of time you can do whatever you want with it you can take the whole time or not you go out have a brisk walk have a meal 
um, catch up with the friends and the family, have a laugh. You know, some of these people in Europe even have a, a, a glass of wine yes. or a beer, right? In yep. Germany, for example, I don't know if I'm making things up or whatever, right? You have a little bit of a nap or a, a rest or a relax, a little bit of walk, go back to work, another three hours. That's a potential of six hours of work and mark my words, <laughs> you are probably super productive. Can you imagine three hours break three hours? You know, oh. a much more accomplished, Pam, you're right. If you have the regular Vote breaks. For me. You, yes, you do. Um, seriously. And you know what? The thing is, if you if you have those kind of breaks, yeah. uh, you have a good meal. You don't run out and get this no. crap that we're buying right. and stop fixing. That's why I'm saying we're having so much problems in our society. People are complaining, which we call leaky gut, but there's another word for it. Um, oh, the diver colitis. I yes. may or may not have said that properly. Uh, because we don't eat healthy. Right. And it's basically like plaque that builds up in the little divots or creates divots in your, in in your yeah. intestine. And so, you know, the fiber is supposed to help to push all that out. Yes. Right. But when you have these little divots in your intestine, then that's when um, the bacteria starts to grow. Right. And it creates inflammation and bloating and gas and, and then mentally as well, because there's that mind gut access, right? Yes, and that's when you start to Depression, not feel good. Yes. No, et cetera. Things and uh, bowel movement is very important, people. It is. When you eat fiber, you have a beautiful bowel movement. You feel good. It's true. So and it gets rid of all of those pockets that are full. Yes, and let's just make this a little this episode a little bit more legit. And I want to read fiber. It's a non-digestible -dig carbohydrate found in plant foods. Did you hear me? Plant food. foods. It is an important part of a healthy diet and plays many roles in the body, like bowel regularity and lower your blood cholesterol levels. Right. What does it do? So it regulates the body's use of sugars. It helps to keep hunger and blood sugar in check. Children and adults need at least 25 to 35 grams of fiber per day for good health. But most Americans, this is American, get only about 15 grams we a day. We could say that for the whole Probably population. for North America. Yeah. Um, the great sources are whole grains, whole fruits and vegetables, your lentils and your beans and your nuts. How many people eat that? That's, that, that's not in your fast food. Um, it's very unlikely that it is in your restaurant food. Your restaurant yeah. food is likely a protein and a French fry, uh, a carbohydrate. And a protein. Right? Yeah, exactly. And not a good one. And not a good one. Um, there are three types of fiber, insoluble, soluble, soluble, and prebiotic. So what are oh. the soluble ones? I did not know there's three. I knew there was two. Well, I don't know if this website's making it up or not. Okay. So insoluble insolu absorbs the fluid and it adds bulk in your large intestine and it makes your stools larger and easier to pass. So your sources, whole grains, nuts, beans, seeds, root veggies, such as carrots, parsnips, rutabaga, and fruit with edible seeds like kiwis, grapes, raspberries, and raisins. Mm, interesting. Now your soluble fiber collects your biomolecules. My father. Right? When you've got that upset tummy. Yeah. Because no, no fiber. Collects your biomolecules, metabolic waste products, hormones, and exogenous chemicals so they can be eliminated from the body. When soluble fiber is lacking, waste products get reabsorbed in the intestines and recirculated through the body, which can cause problems. Mm -hmm. With soluble fiber, these particles can't escape the net. They can't be reabsorbed. So, beans, peas, flax seeds, apples, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, psyllum, which is straight up fiber, like psyllum husk, avocados, and Brussels sprouts. Okay. I mean, just eat beans. <laughs> or Brussels sprouts, too. No, no, but I'm saying it covers it off in soluble yeah. and insoluble. Okay. And then your prebiotic fiber feeds the good bacteria in your GI tract to produce health-promoting compounds like the short-chain fatty acids, bananas, onion, garlic, dandelion greens, and chicory root. Oh, okay. 
Wow. Do you want me to send that to you? No, that's okay. Oh, mom. Experience Life Magazine. Oh, is that? Oh. That's one of our predominant sources where we get our information from, right? Interesting. Very good. I love that. And, you know, variety is the spice of life because I know all of you heard bananas. And you're probably just going to want to overconsume bananas. They're also high in potassium and sugar. So, so be mindful. I mean, be mindful, yes. Eat, eat and moderate yeah. your eating. But uh, mm. very, very important is fiber in everyone's diet. Yeah. Please look that up. Uh, educate yourself and you'll feel much better if you include fiber in your diet. Absolutely. Like when we're finished this, I'm going to make a little dinner. I'm going to have pasta. We all love pasta and think we can't have it. But when you look at how they eat pasta in Italy, for one person, you're looking at 100 to 110 grams of your pasta uh, before you cook it. Right. Right. And then before my pasta is finished, I will be adding in some broccoli to blanch it. And I'm going to add in some black beans and garlic and pesto sauce. There you go. And I'm done. Onions and garlic is your... Yeah. One of the your... The prebiotic, uh, yes. right? And that's something that I do eat lots yeah. is onion and garlic. Yeah. That's no, I know that. Yeah. yeah. So that fiber is that bulk to make you feel full, to absorb and to push, push to clean out your intestines. Yeah. And when we think about our environment and... Um, you know, like the, the environment, like the toxins in our water and food and the air, et cetera, um, and, and hormones, having medicine, medication, et cetera. That's why fiber is so important. Um, don't quote me on this, but, you know, some people who will develop some cancers like breast cancer, for example, it, it can be environmental where you might have a buildup of estrogen, for example. And so that could be from a poor a diet, yeah, yeah, lacking absolutely. the fiber to help clean the hormones, the waste, the byproducts from your intestines, right? So then it just gets reabsorbed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how would your car run without oil? Same kind of it thing. It wouldn't, would it? No. Nope. Same kind of thing in our body with fiber. So, uh, you know, people just just get this information, read, read more about, educate yourself. Um, if you don't think that what we're saying is has any impact on your health, people who have uh, issues with going to the bathroom, yeah, because your bathroom, absolutely. your your bowel movement should be pleasant, should and, be very yeah, pleasant. And you know, a proper intake of fiber will help correct diarrhea and, and constipation and hemorrhoids. Right. Yes, that comes from diarrhea and, and constipation. Absolutely. Right. So I found that to be really helpful. I know this information. And for me, one of my biggest hurdles is um, I will, I'll be really, really busy and sometimes I won't eat until later in the evening and then who has the energy to make food? See, and this is what right? happens. I agree with you, Pam, is uh, you come home, it's late, you don't feel like cooking, so you eat garbage. Yeah. I'm using garbage as a no, term. But, Maybe yeah. most of us don't eat garbage, but it's garbage because we just, whatever's there, we just eat it. It's not healthy. That's right. You know? And... And I, I'm just thinking because another talk that I would like to have in like even the book, The Blue Zone Diet, it, it doesn't necessarily say don't eat these items, but it is saying that in the blue zones around the world, like Sardinia, Okinawa, etc., that you're going to see them eat in moderation dairy. It'll be predominantly sheep and goat. Right. Um, you will see that it's very minimal meat, very minimal fish, very minimal eggs. But what you will see is a higher count of uh, grains, beans, beans fruits, yes. and yeah. veggies, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and it's not like they don't enjoy the cheeses and, and the breads and the seafood or the meats, but it, do, it they'll have it maybe once, one to three times a week. Moderation. Right? Or for yeah. me, like a couple times a month. Exactly. Right. I mean, we're 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 two meat yeah. eaters. Eat it every day. Most people do. And I I blame our government and corporations and marketing and also the individual. Yeah. Anyway, that's we all can I educate got. ourselves. Yes. To eat better and healthy. So Google we can fiber rich have... recipes. Yep. There's lots of them out there. All right. So you me. you can have a nice healthy life. Yes. Amen. All right, Pamela, it was nice talking to you today. It's been fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right now, toodaloo. 
On behalf of Janet and I, we want to thank you for listening to this episode and supporting our podcast. It is such a treat for us to share with you our passion for health and living. If you have any questions or a topic that you would like us to talk about, then please feel free to connect with us at ph at pamelaheichel.com. Remember to meet us in this space every second Wednesday. Much love and peace.